Hey guys, I know it's been a while, but um, we're actually going a little bit older here. Instead of doing a reaction or like a 10 minute kind of theory analysis video, we're going back to the full on reviews I did when I like first started with like Dead End and Dead End. I don't think I did any of the shows, but yeah, it's going to be very similar to the Dead End reviews. My phone turned off. I'm using an electronic script this time, so I'm assuming I'm going to face this problem a lot. Uh, but today, we're talking about a show that I recently finished, maybe a week ago, I think, around now. Uh, Molly Mc The Ghost and Molly McGee. Sorry, I'm going to call it Molly McGee a lot, um, but it's The Ghost and Molly McGee. Uh, it came out in 2021, I think, like the very tail end of 2021 into 2022. So they get released in October and did the weekly thing all the way up until February? I don't know. I, was, I didn't watch it when it came out. I watched it, as you can probably tell. 2023 from well started in 2022 technically i watched it from like uh maybe november up to february obviously it was when i finished it and uh this is a show that i love and don't love at the same time and uh, i think this is going to be one of the more interesting reviews i do because it's not all positives, but it's not all negatives. It's like a weird, like, I like it. I love the show, but I think that it can do so much more. Um, but yeah, I passed up on it when it first came out in 2021. Uh, mainly because it didn't really appeal to me. Because back in 2021, uh, I think it came out when um, Amphibia was still airing its uh, season 3A. And that was like all my attention. This is before I had a channel, keep you in mind. So I would have had to just watch it for fun and then not do anything with it. I knew from the start I wanted to make a review on it because it was just like an interesting show that Disney's done and kind of swept under the rug a little bit because nobody talks about it since the show came out really, which is impressive. But yeah, I passed on initially and then I came back recently because I was like, I have time. I just finished Amphibia a while ago and the Owl House is almost over. <clears throat> Dead End and Inside Job, <clears throat> two of the shows I really love got canceled. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, I was a little bit desperate for a new show to watch, and, uh, I think I'm ready to talk about it. And before we get in, I just want to talk about one thing, because usually if you've seen any of my reviews before, I like to talk about the animation or something about the show in general. Uh, I'm going to talk about the theme song. So usually with, uh, especially with Western animation, the theme songs are usually, usually lyricless, kind of like jams, like I think of Amphibia, Owl House, Gravity Falls kind of thing, where it's just like a tune that is, is good, keep in mind, over like some images being played of like, I don't know, the characters and Gravity Falls or, you know, um, everything else and Amphibian and the Owl House, just like general stuff going on. Um, but in this show, it has a full on catchy ass song in the background. And I think that it is one of the best intros I've ever seen for a show. Because not only does it have an amazingly catchy song, fantastic visuals like these visuals are top notch like the the visuals of the show i'll get to in a second but them in the intro specifically are very fluid and awesome yeah and then the the lyrics just fit so well for the show because the main point of the show that i love is molly and scratch's dynamic one of them's pure positive one of them's pure negative they come together and they kind of influence each other a little bit you know molly becomes more negative Scratch becomes more positive as the series goes on, right? That's like the main point of the show. That is perfectly reflected in the intro, and I love it. It starts off with Scratch trying to scare Molly, you know, what you would expect. And then as it goes on, you can see Scratch getting more into it, and Molly being less, you know, hyperactive. Because at the beginning, she's like, for you and me all time, or whatever, and then she like hugs him. And then at the end, they're like, calm. And then Scratch is like, yep, okay, I'm stuck with this lady forever. Or at least until the end of season one, but we'll get into that later. So yeah, I just think that the intro is phenomenally well done for this show. And then also, uh, another thing that makes this really good is they did like the uh, the, the Andrea uh, theme song takeover on the Disney Channel. And I'm not going to lie, the theme song takeovers usually kind of suck. Uh, I think of the Amphibia ones, the Sasha and Marcy one. I'm not going to lie, they both kind of sucked. I know people like the, the Marcy one because, oh, it's clumsy nerd. But, like, there's that really drawn-out section of the D&D part in the middle I don't like. And then Sasha's is just, like, completely off-key. I'm not even gonna lie. I haven't seen many other ones. I think I've seen, like, a B 
Big City Green Ones, even though I've never watched that show. Um, but this was the the Andrea or Andrea, sorry, theme song takeover was actually really good, and I don't think that it's a testament to the the character or the theme song takeover style of videos. I think it's just a testament to how goddamn good the theme song song is. Like, I don't like the lyrics of the song, but since the beat is still there, I'm like, yeah, this is good music. Like, literally, they replaced, like, the best part of the song with, like, something about a hat, and it still freaking works so well, and it's just, oh, so well done. Which also brings me to the next point. The overall art, art style of the show is, you know, pretty, pretty damn good. It has a very cartoony uh, art style, which I know that sounds weird because it is a cartoon. Like, a cartoon cartoon. You know, like, there's cartoons like The Owl House that are more gritty. And then there's the cartoons cartoons, like Spongebob and, you know, all those colorful, happy shows. It's kind of like a weird blend of both. The scenery looks more like what you'd expect in a Spongebob episode. But the characters honestly look like, I don't know, they look like they're more out of, like, The Loud House or something. Like, they're 2D, but, like, charismatically 2D. And I think it just looks really good when they're both thrown together and i don't know i think the art is really good for the show although to be honest there hasn't been a lot of recent shows uh especially the ones i haven't watched yet i'm really excited to get into moon girl uh that'll be next i promise um that haven't had art styles that wow me amphibia and the owl house sorry to beat a dead horse don't have the best art style but they have their moments of being really well animated especially in the fight scenes in the owl house and anything with the blue powers and amphibia just looks really nice but this show is just like consistently solid overall with colorful backgrounds, colorful characters. You know it. Now that I've complimented the show for six minutes, I'm going to get into something that's uh, less, less than stellar. Uh, that's the characters. With two exceptions, the characters to me are kind of bland. One note, I don't really know how to describe it. I think I've just like seen these character archetypes so many times before that I'm like, come on, I want something new. Uh, and I'm gonna go through each character, and I'm gonna tell you what I mean. Uh, we're gonna start with Molly's family. We're gonna start with Daryl, the brother. The only one I can remember the name of, aside from, obviously, Molly and Scratch. Um, which is, like, the stereotypical, oh, I'm the younger brother who causes chaos. And the, uh, the Amethyst voice actor can only make me think of Amethyst, which, you know, was also a big troublemaker in that show, which does not help Daryl stand out from any other younger brother chaotic character ever to exist and then the mom not gonna lie have no idea her name is like the stereotypical badass mom which you know i love to see i love to see a good badass mom in cartoons but like i've seen it so many times like it is more common than you think i it's like the past couple of disney shows in particular like amphibia owl house even like i could think of more Come on, even like Star vs. the Forces of Evil. You know how Moon was like a complete badass in that show? And then going back to Amphibia and the Owl House, Ida, Camila, Mrs. Boon Choi, they're all just like badass moms. Like, I've seen this all before, and I've seen it all on Disney Channel before, too. And I don't know. And then, to the dad is like the stereotypical dad you know i'm scared of everything and my mom has to do everything for me or my wife i guess not my mom that's kind of weird um yeah it's like i've seen that archetype before and so just molly's family is just like so generic and even molly herself falls into this trap i've seen the happy-go-lucky protagonist in like almost every show i've ever seen ever even in some of the shows i adore like gravity falls mabel is the epitome of happiness and molly mcgee is the epitome of happiness that is how they solve the conflict in the finale is with her positivity and i have seen so many positive female disney protagonists before that i'm just like come on give me something new however oh yeah i was supposed to mention libby and jeff too they're kind of like more side characters but their archetypes also did not we've seen the anxious best friend We've seen the goofy best friend before. You know, they've done they've been done before too. Although I'm not gonna lie, those are two of my favorite characters in the show, just because they have the best scenes. I think the best scenes overall is when Levy Scratch and Molly get together. That balloon ride episode towards the end of the season really stuck out to me as one. And then Jeff's just like this fun 
goofball. He had some moments to shine, especially when he's just him and Scratch and he doesn't have to, like, worry about putting Molly in the picture or Libby or anything. When it's just Scratch and Jeff hanging out one-on-one, -on -one, I think those are his best scenes because it really gets... He really gets the shine in those scenes. Uh, but what I was trying to get to is there are two characters that really break the exception to the rule that I'm, I just kind of mentioned, how every character is kind of generic. The first, and most obviously, is Scratch himself. Um, the, the second main character of the show. You know, the ghost and Molly McGee. The ghost is part of the main cast. And I just think that this is such a well made and two-sided character because at the start of the season you know he starts off as his grumpy pants i hate everything molly mickey i curse you so you can never leave kind of thing and he's scaring molly this positive figure to get out of her house get out of her town and by the end of the season it's light and day compared to what the character was at the start of the season i'm gonna be honest the characters i just mentioned libby the mom the dad all those characters have not changed from the start of the season to the end of the season. Molly changed, Scratch changed, and like Andrea changed, okay? But Scratch is just like such a two-sided person. There's the grumpy pants, and then there's like the I love Molly so much side of him. I think of the, the house movie episode where there's the scene of him just like crying because Molly is leaving and he's bound to the house, he can't leave. And it's just like so sad because you could see how much he genuinely cares about her and you can see that again in the ghost hunting finale where the trying to hunt down molly for his positivity and then scratch is like trying to lure her away because he doesn't want the ghost catcher to find molly and just their dynamic molly and scratch's dynamic carry season one for me if these two characters were placed with some nobodies with no personality i would not like this show they hard carry all of these plots because they are all pretty cookie cutter and by the books but these two characters bouncing back and forth off each other two opposites good and bad basically bouncing off each other just make it so good and then the other character weirdly enough that i think kind of breaks this mold of you know stereotypical um seen it before is uh, actually andrea um because there's been rich girls there's been popular girls there's been popular boys you know We've seen this architecture before, especially with Disney. But what's interesting to me is Andrea is a rich girl done right and differently, too. Because they've done like the, oh, I've been neglected by my parents thing. But it's like a weird in-between because she's not neglected. She gets everything she wants. She gets ponies. She gets boxes of Girl Scout cookies. You know, she gets all the stuff. But she does not get actual genuine attention from her parents she gets like the fake oh i bought you a pony kind of attention from her parents and this leads to like when the mcgees get their house back towards the end of season one the last scene of andrea we get is her on her phone obviously you know we're not going to get rid of her whole personality and she's like i just helped my best friend molly mcgee and she wasn't doing it for any personal gain or to get more like she was saying it because she genuinely thought of herself as Molly McGee's best friend, much to Libby and Scratch's dismay. And I'm just like, wow, I don't know what to say to that. That is so wholesome, and it just, like, breaks the mold of what you think a popular girl would be. And oh boy, okay. Let's move on from character, shall we? I'm going to talk about the best episode of the show. That's usually something I like to bring up. Um, the best ones were the two two-parters they did. So the first one was when Libby and Scratch were meeting. That was the first episode that I was like, okay, this show has some really great potential. And I really love that episode, but I don't think it's my favorite overall because as it went on, there were more and more episodes. I was like, yeah, that one's probably better than that one. Uh, the other two-parter was the house moving one I've mentioned a few times now. Uh, I just like how seamlessly it went in from one episode to another. You know, they're solving the conflict of the hospital bill in one part, and then it cuts to the black screen like the end ghost and molly mcgee screen and then the sign comes up and you're like oh no we're not done and then they just continue seamlessly into probably the best two-parter of the season uh but as i mentioned before there are a couple episodes that actually stood out to me that were just like the normal 11 minute segment episodes um the ones i can think of are the trial one the one where scratch is like accused of i think eating cookies out of the cookie jar or something and molly has to defend them and they like 
I think they discovered it was Jeff at the end, but the whole time it had me questioning, is Scratch really the one that did it? Is the mom the one that really did it? Like, that one had me on edge. But they, they took the stupid approach, which kind of hurt me a little bit. I was ready for it to be Molly, which would have been a twist and a half. And the other one, probably my favorite episode of the whole show was the the stargazing one. Uh, I just felt that was a really good character moment for Molly because, you know, she's like hyper offensive, hyper positive, you know, all of those um, things. I think I said offensive. I meant obsessive. Those are uh, two completely different things. But yeah, she takes Libby and Scratch and her mom because she needs a ride out to stargaze in the woods because she really took Libby's words of we're young, but we're not going to be young forever. You know, we got to make moments that'll last. And so Molly wants to have her two best friends see this meteor shower and make lifetime memories. And my heart was just like melting because by the time that Scratch and Libby realized this and they took the balloon up to the stars, I feel like that's got to be the best moment of the show. It was just so heartwarming and so, so great. And... The songs, the songs are so good. I'm thinking of doing a future video, ranking all the songs. Maybe when season two comes out, because that's supposed to happen in 2023. Maybe I'll do a reaction if you guys want it. I don't know. This isn't really a show that works well with reactions, because it's not very story heavy. But that's that's for another day. Um, but there were usually like one to two songs per thing. And most of the time, just like the theme song, they are very, very well done and very well animated. I don't know one song at the top of my head that I don't like. A little, a lot of them are like, yeah, that, that was a song, not my favorite. Um, but some of them really, really stood out to me. And I was like, damn, that was a really good song. Now, I'm not going to go back and listen to it. But I was like, damn, that was a pretty good song. I think of like the, um, going back to the, the one where Scratch meets Libby for the first time. That song was really good, surprisingly. That's the one that like stuck out to my mind the whole time. I was like, damn, that one was really good. But aside from that, most of the episodes on the show are really hit or miss. However, the hit episodes hit honestly less hard, and the miss episodes miss less hard. Like, there's this general level of quality that's like, yeah, that was a, that was a good episode, and then not much more after that, you know? Like, the bad ones, you're like, and that one was kind of boring, but it wasn't really, like, bad, bad. And then the good ones, you're like, yeah, that one was really good, but nothing, nothing exciting happened, nothing grabbed me, you know? And, uh, most of the, most of the better ones involve the ghost. There was a lot of episodes, like the ice skating one, where they would find a ghost and then they'd have to solve the problems. I'm thinking of the Abraham Lincoln episode, the, um, the, the one with the town, the, uh, the, the dick ghost who, like, pretended he was the founder of the town, whatever he wasn't. I'm thinking of all these episodes involving the ghost world, the one where Scratch goes to school. That was another good episode. The one with the ghost council coming to the Thai dinner thing at Molly's house. All of these were just like really good episodes. And then on the other hand, there's the episode where Molly has to take care of a goat. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't care about this episode. It's not bad by any means. It's still wholesome enough. It's only 11 minutes. It can't be that bad. And there's the ones like the earlier ones and the camping one I didn't really care for. The pilot itself wasn't that great, to be honest. Like, there are just, like, a lot of miss episodes, and the hits aren't that strong, so I don't know. Which leads me to another problem with the show. There is no ongoing story. And I know what you're thinking, oh, surprise, didn't know that one was coming. And then you're also like, wait a second, there is one. There's the ghost council and the chairman and... Um, Scratch being summoned to the Ghost Council, and Molly, I don't know, what did Molly do that was ongoing? She became, like, a wraith at the end of the season, that was kind of awesome. But other than that, there's no, like, ongoing, ongoing story. There's no lingering threat, at least anymore, because spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you've gotten this far and not been spoiled, Molly killed the chairman at the end of season one. The chairman was discovered to be the big bad in the same episode he was killed. They were like, you know why we scare people, Molly? To feed the chairman. And then at the end of the episode, they're like, oh no, the chairman's dead? How are we going to feed ghosts now? And I've seen the season two clip already. And from what it looks like, the ghost council is going to be on our side now. And I think that the best thing they can do to do an overarching story from here is to revive the chairman. Essentially, I think that one of the ghost councils 
people. Uh, don't know any of their names. I know one of them has Moon Bizet from Star Versus. Um, one of them is going to be a traitor, right? The other three are going to be on good. You know, they're going to find stuff they want. One of them is going to go back, revive the chairman from the dead, and start, I don't know, making a ghost army or something to get back in Molly and Scratch. And then, like, they probably don't know about it at first and then find out when it's, like, too late. And then the chairman has, like, too much power again. I don't know. I think something like that could work very well for this show. That or they need to introduce something new entirely. You need to throw out that whole scratch and the ghost board thing out the window. There needs to be a bigger, badder threat. Kind of like uh, the Owl House's Golden Guard for the first half of season two. He was kind of like this anti-hero that you didn't want to win. But he was still like this lingering threat throughout that show. I think something like that could work really well here. Maybe if that like happiness assassin came back and just wanted vengeance tried to like kill molly or something i don't know something like that could really really help the show out because they solved that conflict way too fast with the chairman i get it's only 11 minute episode but there was a lot a lot of build up for a whole lot of nothing and yeah that's basically what i want out of season two i think that they really just need to add something big like a giant hook to get people get people to come back you know because if they don't then people are going to lose interest. If they do more episodic shows, sorry, episodes, just for an entire season two, people are going to lose interest, and the show in the landscape we live in will most likely be canceled. I'm still scarred from Inside Job and Dead End, and granted, this isn't Netflix, but, like, the norm for shows right now is to do two seasons. So if Molly McGee can't do something in its second season, that's like, wow, that's really really great for a second season of a show then that's kind of problematic because then we just have this kind of mediocre yet also great show that has so much potential just never lived up to it like this show honestly season one was great season one leave it exactly as it is i wouldn't change a thing but it all just ride or die on season two i need something something big to happen something that makes season two like oh my god that's one of the best seasons or even, like, that was a great season. I can't believe they did that. Just to, like, make a perfect bow on this already great show. And I think that that would be... I don't know. I think that would be just fantastic. And that's probably just my personal bias. I know there's a lot of people that like it as an episodic show. But they've been building up the Ghost Council and the Chairman. Why can't we get a little bit more, you know? A little bit of an ongoing story, sprinkle it on top, something like that, you know? Wouldn't hurt anything. And honestly... That's all I have to say. So yeah, Molly McGee... Sorry, I told you I'd do it. The ghost in Molly McGee. I really like season one, but I want more, basically. I want them to do more of what they're doing, but also better. I want a heartwarming show between two opposites, but they've already done that. I want something bigger for season two. So really, I just think Molly McGee is a great show that has... A lot of potential for the future and I just I just want to see that future be really good for this show you know I think that this could be one of the best Disney shows if they keep going the direction they're going with an ongoing story but that's probably just my opinion um I'm gonna wrap things down here we're gonna keep it shorter and sweeter because the last video I filmed for the first channel was over an hour long so it's honestly a relief to do just a 20 minute video for once but yep this should be going up sometime in March. Uh, my birthday is coming up soon. Happy birthday to me. I'll start my Moon Go reactions momentarily. Don't worry about that. That'll be coming whenever I get a chance to film it, basically. Which is um not right now, because I'm a very busy bee who's either sick or has stuff to do. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I'm going to wrap things down here. Love Molly McGee. Love the show. Wanted to do better things. But thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Mental health is important. And I will see you all in my next video and toodaloo for now yeah we're gonna spice it up a little bit enjoy that for once and uh yeah bye bye